Logitech is a company that has always brought their A-game to the gaming peripheral market, but have they managed to keep this standard with the G502 Proteus Spectrum? Let's find out. This mouse is priced at $75, which puts it in the higher tier with something like the Rival 300. Dimensions wise, this mouse is 132mm long, 75mm wide and 40mm high and weighing in at 126 grams. but it does come with 5 3.6 gram tunable weights, but more on that later. Features wise, the 502 comes with the PMW3366 optical sensor, which is my personal favourite, up to 12,000 dpi, 11 programmable buttons, a 1.8 meter braided USB 2.0 cable and 16.8 million colour RGB in two separate zones. Let's move on to the tour. On the left hand side we have a sniper button positioned just in front of the thumb. Just above and slightly behind that is two side buttons, which are positioned perfectly for me, but all three of these buttons feel a bit mushy to press. The thumb rest area is covered in a very thin coat of rubber to help with grip, but I do wish it was a bit thicker and had a bit more of a textured area to it for it to be perfect. On the right hand side is another thin coating of rubber, but it has better texturing to it making grip in this area sturdy. On top is two angled side buttons beside the left click for changing DPI up and down on the fly. Just beneath that is a 3 bar lighting zone to show which of the 3 DPI settings you have selected with this area also being RGB controllable. Just behind that is a small capital G to signify Logitech's gaming series of mice and this area is also RGB controllable. Back up towards the front now where we have the satisfying to press left and right click buttons rated at 20 million with all the other buttons rated at 5 million clicks. In the middle of these is a metal scroll wheel with well defined steps and the ability to push it either left or right to activate extra functions which you can assign to it in the software as it has no functions by default. Behind the scroll is a button, once pressed will allow endless scrolling mode which is actually pretty handy. Behind that button is the profile switch button which can be used to swap between up to 3 profiles on the fly. Underneath is 6 different size feet to help with gliding which do an ok job but it doesn't always feel 100% smooth. In the middle is the aforementioned 3366 sensor. But that's not all for the bottom, as by removing this magnetic cover it grants access to a hollowed out area that allows you to place any or all of the 5 weights to really customise your experience. I personally prefer a heavier mouse so I use all 5 of them to make it 144 grams, making it the heaviest mouse I have used. Also on the weight cover they continued the textured triangle pattern seen on both side grips. Now that's out of the way, let's get started with the testing. First up as always is CSGO aim training. Before moving on to some TDM. Next up is Battlefield 1 for some close range engagements. Then on to some sniping. The mouse seemed to perform well, but I feel with all the extra weights it does seem to bog down the feet, making it less fluid, so keep that in mind. Software is up next, which Logitech have simply called Logitech Gaming Software, which has quick access functions on the main menu, or down the bottom right is all the separate settings buttons. First up is the profile screen, where you can set up to 3 profiles, set up to 5 different DPI levels, plus the ability to assign one of those DPI settings as your sniper DPI for quick access. Also on this screen, you can change your polling rate up to 1000Hz and also reassign each of your buttons. On your next menu is your lighting controls, where you can enable or disable the logo or the side areas separately. Change the lighting effect to either off, which will keep it at a static colour, colour cycle, which is pretty self explanatory, or breathing of a single colour. You can also change the brightness and the speed of these effects. The lighting is very minimal and the colours are a bit washed out compared to the colour shown in the software. On the next screen you can calibrate your gaming surface for optimal tracking and lift distance. On the final screen is something pretty interesting which can show you how many times you've pressed each button during a certain time period and also how long each key was pressed, with also a key press per minute counter. You do have to push the play button in the middle to actually utilise this function though. These sessions will also be stored to view later if this is something that interests you. In conclusion, the 502 sits in a higher tier of wired gaming mouse and deserves its spot. The ability of having a weight management system is fantastic and really allows another level of customization that should be included with more premium mice. Unfortunately the lighting isn't really a selling point and comes across a bit more of an afterthought. I would also like it if the rubber was a bit thicker, but I still managed to grip the mouse fine. The sensor is amazingly accurate and responsive, which is enough for me to put my caster away and make this mouse my daily driver. If you enjoyed this video leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it please consider subscribing for more reviews and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.